Hello, good evening, everybody. Uh, welcome to the respiratory therapy program, uh, virtual open host session here at Fanshawe College. My name is Connor, and I work in the reputation and brand management department. I'm your host slash moderator for today's session, uh, and we're very lucky to be joined by Julie Brown, who will be speaking about the RT program here at Fanshawe. Hi, Julie, thanks so much for being here. Can you just help me out and go to your next slide, please? No problem. Thank you. So before Julie begins, I just wanna go over a couple quick housekeeping items. Uh, number one, audience webcams and mics will be turned off for this session, so don't worry, no one is gonna be able to see or hear you at all. Uh, number two, if you have any questions throughout the session, please use the questions feature. Uh, you should see a speech bubble that has a question mark where you can type your questions. You can ask questions during the presentation uh, and not just at the end of it. So I, I strongly recommend you do that uh, just so that you don't forget anything later on down the line. Uh, I will gather all of your submitted questions during the presentation uh, to ask later on in our live Q&A. The way that this is going to work is uh, Julie will give her presentation hopefully around 15 to 20 minutes and then the last 10 to 15 minutes will be a live Q&A where you can ask any questions or we'll try to answer the ones that you're already asking during the presentation. We'll do our best to get through all of them, no guarantees, uh, but we can talk about what happens if we don't get around to yours. Um, and if you're looking for more after the session, then, you know, like I said, we will provide you with some contact info as well as how to book an appointment with one of our Fanshawe College recruiters. Lastly, uh, on your end, if you have any multiple programs that are open and running, we do recommend that you just take a quick second just to close them uh, since it may compromise your webinar experience. Um, so just if you have anything high intensity that's running. Uh, just feel free to shut that down now. So with that said, I'll pass it over to Julie and I will be back later for the live Q&A at the end. Julie, please take it away. Thanks so much and welcome everybody. Uh, thank you for your interest in our respiratory therapy program. And um, yeah, my name is Julie Brown and I'm the coordinator of the respiratory program here at Fanshawe College. So to get started, I'm not sure how much each of you know about respiratory therapy as a profession. So I'm going to take you through a little bit about the profession and then a bit about our program, what really makes it special, and then I'm happy to take some questions from you at the end. So just to start with, what is a respiratory therapist? Well, what we are are highly skilled healthcare professionals. We work as part of the healthcare team and we care for patients, um, but we play a big role in the care of those patients by evaluating, treating, and maintaining cardiopulmonary or heart-lung function. This is obviously a big part of healthcare. And so we work with patients of all ages, from newborns to children, adults, and the elderly. And we work all throughout hospitals caring for these critically ill patients. Um, not just in hospital settings though, but we also work in community care, clinics, sales, research, and education as well too. And I have a little video, it's only a couple of minutes that was made for our program, just so you can hear from some of the students in our program and faculty and um, see into our labs since this is virtual and you can't really see into the labs like you normally could. So I'll play that two minute video and then I'll come back to this presentation. Respiratory therapy is a profession, mostly in Canada but uh, in the United States, but in a few other countries as well too. Um, and respiratory therapists work with all cardiopulmonary disorders. So that can include patients in the hospital, patients at home, uh, some clinic work, um, some respiratory therapists work in education and sales.
So I chose a respiratory therapy program because I'd always known I wanted to go into healthcare, but for whatever reason, I never really felt like nursing and whatnot was kind of my thing. And I actually had a grandmother who suffered from chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, so COPD. Um, my experience in this program has been phenomenal. I've never felt more empowered as a student to make mistakes, ask questions, and really learn from that. Um, the professors and faculty here are incredible and so supportive, and everyone in my program has really become quite close. So as a student at Fanshawe College, it's been really amazing. So just to show you a little bit more about what respiratory therapists do, I've got a couple of pictures that kind of highlight our role. So you can see here is the respiratory therapist at the bedside of a critically ill patient. We work very closely with the team in the ICU. Um, and we look after the airway and the life support or ventilator the system. So that's a huge part of our role within the intensive care unit. So obviously we're often working with the sickest patients. Uh, you can see here we work with patients of all ages. We can be with a newborn baby from the second they're born. So any sort of high risk deliveries where there could possibly be a problem with a baby that's born, we are there waiting for the baby to be born to assist them and resuscitate them if need be or provide care to them um, right from the first day they're born. We also do transport. So any patient that's on life support or a ventilator, a respiratory therapist has to go with them if they get moved anywhere. So that may involve an ambulance, a helicopter, a fixed wing plane, whatever it is, we will transport those critically ill patients. And here, this is, um, them transporting a tiny little baby in that um, piece of equipment there. But you know, some people don't work in hospitals or some people even work in hospitals, but still just work in clinics. So um, you know, maybe they want a more Monday to Friday job with regular hours, a little bit slower paced. And so they work in breathing clinics and allergy clinics and you know, all types of clinics. They may work in research or sales or education, um, possibly in the OR, lots of different avenues within this profession, which is one of the things that makes it so special. Uh, some people like to get involved in the education side of things. And so there are other designations you can get after your respiratory therapy. Um, and that can be an asthma or COPD educator, or you can help patients learn about their um, airway disorders and help them with their treatment plans and following up with them. What kind of person should become a respiratory therapist or, you know, what is going to be in your career path if you do become one? Well, I think critical thinker, someone who's personable and someone who's energetic are really important traits that you should have if you're thinking of this profession. You know, obviously we're working in a fast paced environment. We have to be able to think quickly and make critical decisions. We're working with a team and with patients. And so being personable is very important. And it's a fast paced job, at least the route that most people pick in the hospital is a very fast paced action packed job. So that has to interest you as well. The career is very challenging, but rewarding. You know, when we work really hard um, to care for a patient and we see a positive outcome, that can be so rewarding. All of your hard work really pays off. Uh, like I said, it's a very fast paced job. Um, things change quickly and our patients change quickly and we have to be ready for that. It's full of variety. Every single day is different. In my career as a respiratory therapist, I've never had two days the same. And that's one of the things that I love the most about it. We do a lot of problem solving. And that problem solving makes a difference in people's lives, you know, and that's one of the most wonderful things is to go home at the end of a shift and know that we've made a difference in people's lives. 
So what about getting into our program? Well, there is the pre-health science pathway. Um, and so that is sort of the one of the preferred pathways into our program. If you haven't gone to the pre-health science talk at Fanshawe, I really suggest it. We get about half of our entry from pre-health science. The other half tends to come in with degrees. So we do get quite a few students that come with a science degree, a kin degree, a health science degree, or maybe even part of their degree. And partway through, they realized they wanted something else. Um, that tends to make up the bulk of our first year class. We have had a few people from high school. I mean, on paper, you can get in out of high school, but because we are a highly competitive program, it is difficult uh, often for high school students to get in. And so that's why free health science is often a great pathway into our course, our program. So you do also have to have um, a minimum final average of a 3.0 GPA coming out of that pre-health science pathway and we do have minimum grades of B's or 70s in the required courses so those are high school level courses in English, math, physics, chemistry and biology. In most years we have the health occupation aptitude exam that you also have to do but due to COVID and um, the testing center safety that's on hold so if you're applying for this fall um, or if you're applying this fall or winter for next fall, 2021, you will not be doing the Health Occupations Aptitude Exam. But if you're thinking of this program for future years, uh, as soon as the test centers open back up, so hopefully next year, you will be doing that Health Occupations Aptitude Exam. And you can do it at test centers at Fanshawe or at other colleges, and then the results just get to sent to Fanshawe if you don't do it at Fanshawe. Like I said, we are a highly competitive program. This past year, so for the 2020 fall, we had 450 applicants for 65 spots. So it does get competitive to get in. Um, you know, if you're a good student coming out of university or pre-health science, you should get in, um, but it can be quite difficult for high school students. So it's always good to think of another possible pathway to get in. We are a seven level program over, it's almost three years, it's about 32 months. So the way that our semesters progress is in year one, you have level one. So let's say you started next fall, you would do level one in the fall and then level two in the winter. Then you'd have a four month summer break. Then you'd come back, you would do level three the next fall and level four that winter. Then instead of having a summer break, you actually go into what's called year three which is level five, and you head in to the clinic for an entire year of clinical practicum. So that clinic year is broken down into three levels. Those are level five, six, and seven. So level five is typically 10 weeks in the spring, so May, June, and half of July. Then you have a six to seven week summer break. You return to clinic in the fall for another 10 weeks, and then level seven is a 20 week semester from November through till April, and you graduate at the end of April. That's how our semesters progress. That entire third year, like I said, it's out in our clinical sites. So our clinical rotations is that entire third year made up into blocks. So you're gonna rotate through and you have to actually go to all these areas to obtain your skills that you need to graduate. So during that clinical year, uh, people will rotate through neonatal, pediatric, and adult ICUs. They'll spend time in the operating room, the emergency department, the general care wards. They'll spend time in clinics and community care. They'll go on patient transport, and they'll be a part of the rapid response team that responds to any critically ill patients in trouble or any code blues in the hospital. So that's what the year is made up of. So it's a action-packed, busy year. Uh, those clinical sites, however, they're selected during the winter of second year, and they are provided by us. So we can't have students going out and finding their own clinical spots, but we do offer them you know, all over Ontario. So currently, and, and these can change, but currently our clinical sites include all of the London hospitals, Stratford Hospital, St. Thomas, Guelph, all of the Hamilton hospitals, Niagara Hospital, Oakville or Halton Healthcare, 
um, Oshawa, which is called Lake Ridge with Ajax, um, Markham, and our community care clinics. So lots of opportunities to go to different clinical sites um, over the year. So that's the information about our program, and I will take your questions later, but I just kind of want to tell you what sets Fanshawe's respiratory therapy program apart from others, because there are quite a few respiratory therapy schools throughout Ontario. So what do we pride ourselves on and what sets us apart? Well, we focus on creating well-rounded professionals, and I'll talk a little bit more about how we do that coming up, so that when you graduate, you don't just have the knowledge of a respiratory therapist and a, the skills of a respiratory therapist, but you are a well-rounded professional that someone wants to hire. We are going to educate you in state-of-the-art labs for simulation. We have our very own um, Fanshawe Respiratory Therapy Lab and amazing access to high-tech simulation labs where we can mimic the ICU, the neonatal ICU, the operating room, and let you practice on mannequins, all of those skills, before you go out and practice on real live humans. We provide valuable community and international experiences to our students, and I'll tell you more about that too. And you can see the faculty down in the lower right-hand corner here. This is our six-person full-time faculty team, and we all teach with passion. Uh, we were awarded the President's Distinguished Award for Program Team this fall which we're very proud of. We, many of us still continue to work clinically. We work weekends and holidays and summers to maintain our clinical skills. And that allows us to bring you the latest information on what respiratory therapists are doing. And so we teach all of our courses with that passion because we all love being respiratory therapists. We have exemplary registry exam grades and these are things you might not think to ask when you're looking at various schools, but being able to graduate and pass your licensing exam is obviously very important. You don't wanna finish a program and not be able to work. So we have exemplary registry exam grades. Our averages have been between 95 and 100% for the last five to 10 years, and that's about 10% higher than the national average, which is pretty amazing. Like I said, we create well-rounded professionals. So we teach our students to be professionals as well as RTs. We help you, we create opportunities for you to get involved with various groups. And we lead by example, by being involved with these groups ourselves and bringing you in to slowly learn how to get involved and eventually how to become members of these groups to give talks, uh, to volunteer, et cetera. So we work very closely with the Lung Association, the Canadian Blood Services, our regulatory college of respiratory therapists here in Ontario, our two societies, the Canadian and the Ontario societies. And we have our very own Respiratory Therapy Student Federation, which is a group of students that run an entire group and put on um, fundraisers, volunteer events, and educational events. So we help you get involved in those things. Uh, in the end, our students put forth um, professional portfolios that they can take to job interviews and we hear from people who interview our students all the time how much they love seeing all of these other things that the students have done through their three years of school other than just learning the knowledge and skills of a respiratory therapist. We work with a group called ProResp which is a community care group uh, and they offer summer internships at their offices all over Ontario. So students interview and get hired to work with respiratory therapists in these offices, and they offer these summer internships all over Ontario, so wherever you're from. Uh, they're paid positions during the third year summer break, and we facilitate that and help you guys get prepared for those interviews and to get hired at those offices. Uh, and this is something that's really interesting our school is the only one currently in Ontario working um, and doing this for our students. So it's um, something great that we offer. A real highlight for us was spring of 2019 when we were able to offer an optional clinical rotation in Guatemala. 
we as faculty took 13 students to Lantigua, Guatemala, where we worked in four different clinics helping the people of Lantigua, Guatemala. You can see here we worked with seniors, we worked with infants, um, and we really helped out at those clinics. We were there for 10 days, uh, and it was life-changing for our students and for us. We actually had a second trip. We planned to do it every year, and we had a second trip booked for June, which because of COVID has been postponed, but we still hope to take that group of students. They're really looking forward to it. We also try to have a lot of fun. Our program can be stressful. Our profession can be stressful and it can get difficult. So we always like to celebrate when we can find time. We love to promote our profession. Um, and often you'll see us in the halls of Fanshawe College calling people over to say, hey, come and check out what respiratory therapy is. Come and try intubating this patient. We'll take stretchers out in the hall and call a code blue and all of the RTs will start resuscitating the mannequin and people come around and look. We just try to promote our profession and really get people interested. We also like to celebrate, you know, we have a lot of potlucks. Unfortunately, they're on hold right now because of COVID. This was not during COVID, but this was an end of midterm exam Halloween potluck lunch that we had one year. Um, at the end of fall final exams, we like to have a holiday party and potluck. Uh, just chance to sort of um, debrief after some stressful times in our program. And many of you probably heard that respiratory therapists were really We've really been and continue to be key in the COVID pandemic treatment. So we are the ones with the critically ill COVID patients. We are intubating them and ventilating them and trying to help them survive when they get critically ill. And so we've been in the media. It's been a wonderful chance for a lot of our students to get interviewed. Uh, we had our third year students actually graduate and go out to work early because of the shortage. They needed those RTs out there working right away, and so we were able to fast track them through at the end and get them out there working. Uh, and we've been really proud of how our students have responded. A lot of our students went in and worked in the hospitals as screeners um, and helping out in RT departments while they were still students uh, to try and help through this pandemic. And many still are as we're hitting, you know, our, our second wave here. We really hope you'll pick Fanshawe's respiratory therapy program. We think it's the best. We want you to become one of our respiratory therapy students in their blue scrubs that you see around campus. Uh, and you can become one of those respiratory therapy real life heroes like the rest of us. So I really hope to see you all in September and um, that I've at least increased your interest in this program. Here's some links as well. So we have quite a few social media sites where we like to track what we're doing. Um, any of our events, we like to follow up with some of our grads. We like to um, show any interviews that our faculty or students have done. And you can follow that on whatever's your choice. Uh, fan on Facebook, on Instagram are sort of the two big ones. We're on Twitter a little bit. And then there's also our Fanshawe website where you can find out more information about our program. You can also go to our Respiratory Therapy Student Federation page and see a lot of the great work that they do uh, and see what our students are up to. Thank you so much for tuning in. And here's my email. If you have any questions, you can email me at jbrown at fanshawec.ca. And if you have other questions about Fanshawe, you can email us at myfuture at fanshawe.ca or book an appointment with a recruiter. Thanks so much for joining. And I think we'll take some questions now. Yes, we will. Thank you again, Julie. That was a fantastic presentation. Really, really appreciate having you on board for this. If you have a couple of questions, I just wanted to give a quick little reminder uh, to everybody on the call right now. If you want to ask a question, please use the questions feature. Uh, and to open that, just click on the speech bubble that has a question mark, and then you can type in your question there. We only have about five minutes. We'll maybe go a little bit over time, but not a whole lot. Uh, so we do have some questions to get through, and again, we'll try to get through all of them. Uh, but if not, then you can always look on the screen there and you can send an email to myfuture at fanshawc.ca 
or you can book an appointment with one of our Fanshawe College recruitment officers. Uh, you can do that by going to fanshawec.ca slash connect. I'm just going to quickly post that here in the chat. If you go in the chat feature, you'll notice that I put a couple of things in there. Uh, so feel free to check out those links for some more information. So without further ado, let's get to some of these questions. Uh, Julie, the first question that we have is, what is the hiring rate of graduates to a full-time position? Yeah, you know, healthcare right now is difficult. Not a lot of people jump into a full-time position. I will say, if you're flexible, so Ontario is not great for full-time positions in healthcare right now, uh, but other provinces are. So if you're interested in moving, there are full-time jobs across Canada. Uh, we just happen to have a lot of respiratory therapy schools in Ontario. Um, but a lot of our students will find multiple part-time jobs and they can work full or more than full-time if they want to uh, because they tend to do shift work. Um, they can even work more than full-time with that. And then if you want to go into community care or clinics or sales or education, those jobs tend to be full-time right away. So it really depends on what you want and what you're looking for and how flexible you are. There are lots of jobs. They just usually like to hire people into part-time positions first, really sort of try them out and then get into a full-time job. And that's very typical for healthcare in Ontario right now, as it is for a lot of sectors. Great, but thanks for the answer. <laughs> uh, second question, this is a little bit more admission specific, but if you are coming out of university with a degree, are mm -hmm. you still required to have a minimum 70 average in the required courses? What would happen if your average was mid 60s in a university course? So those requirements aren't for your university, those are for your high school courses. So you need to meet those requirements with your high school courses, and then you'll get points on a grid that will just add to, to it. So any post-secondary that you do, you're given points on a grid. If you did really well and had 90s in university, it will give you more points on the grid. If you got by and have 60s or 50s in university, it'll give you less points on the grid, but it actually still gives you points. So any post-secondary does help your admission. Fantastic. Uh, my next question that I have here is, do high school students who have taken university level courses have a good chance of getting into the program? Yeah, unfortunately, because if all you're coming in with is high school, you only get points in one section of the grid. You're missing all of the post-secondary points. You will get zero in this category. And when we have, you know, 450 people applying for 65 spots. If we even get 65 who have post-secondary, they're obviously going to beat out all of the high school students. So, you know, in the last decade, I can count on one hand the high school admissions that we've had. And while it's unfortunate, I do think there is some learning to be done. And if you're looking for a fast route into our program, the pre-health science option is a great one. And they really teach you study skills, maturity, the kinds of things that we don't have time to teach in our program. We jump right in in level one and things move quickly. So I'd say if you're in high school and you have great grades, try. You never know what's going to happen each year. But I think of pre-health as your plan B. Great. Okay, we have time for a couple more questions here. Can respiratory therapists work in other provinces? Yes, so when you graduate from an accredited program like ours is, and you pass your national uh, licensing exam, you can work in any province. Uh, and if you have access to a visa, you could go to the States and you can attempt their licensing exam as well too. Great, and my last question, Julie, is how many people find part-time work within six months? Um, everyone who looks. If you're looking, and you're at all flexible, you can find work, especially right now. There are a lot of jobs. Many of our grads have two and three jobs. Um, if somebody takes time off and doesn't wanna look for a job right away, it sometimes gets more difficult for them as they wait and wait and wait, or maybe they only wanna work at one hospital. They might be waiting for a while until that one hospital is hiring. So if you're at all flexible, you know, any of our grads who are looking for jobs, when they graduated, found jobs, and most of them found multiple jobs. Excellent. Well, that concludes the end of our session. We just hit 6.30 here. I just want to thank you again, Julie, for uh, you know giving 
such a thoughtful and insightful presentation. I also wanted to thank everybody who has been on this call. We hope that you learned a lot about, you know, the RT program here at Fanshawe College. Uh, and I just want to remind everybody again that if you had a question that you weren't able to ask, then uh, feel free to send an email to us. It's right there on the screen. It's also in the chat. And you can also book an appointment with one of our recruitment officers at fanshawec.ca slash connect. That link is also in the chat as well. So again, thank you very much. And uh, we hope to see you soon. Take care. Thanks so much.